Hey, this is Brandon, and I've got a pay what you want game about army ants to show you. It's on Drive Through RPG, of course, uh, and it is called Michael T. Desing's Army Ants eighty one: Basic Rules for an Old School RPG. There's a lot of history here that he tells you about uh, the making of the game and how it has had six different variations. And this is an effort to get back to basics, echoing the heart of those original nineteen ninety six rules that he created which were deeply inspired by BX81. So uh, he's trying to make them a little bit more modern and more playable. It's a traditional pen and paper RPG, meaning that several players who play as ant soldiers go on missions developed and refereed by the Mission Master, or MM. The players try to accomplish their mission objectives, earning experience points, and increasing their ants' level and rank. So this is not a huge, huge game uh, page-wise, but it's got a lot of stuff in it. So, uh, some very interesting stuff here. As you can see, I'm going to flip through. Uh, of course, all ants are going to be male. Um, if you want to play female, you can play as a ladybug. It makes sense. Uh, and then again, there's this brief history. He talks about listening to Stone Temple Pilots' song, Army Ants, and a whole bunch of other stuff, too. So, it's got some interesting little art there. It tells you about the history of this, uh, the war, pretty much, that's going on. The Wasp Empire and Ant Confederation have been locked in unending warfare. At present, this warfare centers on a 12-acre body of water known as Warwick Pond, with much of the conflict happening in and around the rough pathways that circumnavigates the pond, the thousand-meter trail. This trail was once used by giants, but now sits largely untouched. So it's got a bit of a history for you to read. Like what's going on in this place? There's some slang for you to learn down here at the bottom left. Um, so that's pretty cool. They have their own little slang. And it's going to tell you about gameplay. So from what I can pick up on this, this is a little bit, if you're familiar with dice pool systems, you're looking to get a certain amount of successes. A result of four or five on any die in your pool is a plus one success. If all your dice in your pool are a one, then you botch and you lose your next action. And a result of six on your die in your pool is plus two successes. If all of your sixes, all of your rolls are sixes with your pool, you receive plus two successes per six, but also re-roll your entire pool. You keep doing this until you don't roll all sixes. On these re-rolls, ones cannot hurt you. Rolling all ones after rolling all sixes only means that you don't get any additional successes. You don't botch. Even with only 1D in your pool, you still have a 1 in 6 chance of getting 2 successes and a reroll. Pretty cool. Target numbers, pretty normal. It's going to have this DT123. Uh, you're going to have some traits here. It's going to be body, mind, and reflex. You're going to be, the different traits are going to be go from 1, 2, and 3. That means how many dice you're going to roll. And of course, you are going to have some skills that will add on to it, giving you more dice to roll. This is fairly basic kind of world of darkness that you may know with these sixes and it's and it's a tried and true proven system and it works great i enjoy it um basic combat you're going to be rolling against different foes things like your foes reflex if it's going to be uh you know if you're trying to attack them you're going to add successes beyond what you get on the difficulty um target number and that's going to add on to damage for example, with Reflex 2 and Training in Small Arms, plus 1, you get 3 dice to attack. With your AM-16, it does 4 damage. If your foe has Reflex 3, you need 3 successes to hit. So here are some possibilities. You miss with 2 successes. You hit well with 5 successes. You deal damage 6 from your weapon, plus 2 for the extra successes beyond the DT. 5 and 3, it's 2. And then your foe's body will soak up 2, uh, but you still get deals for grit that's pretty much the damage like the hit points this is significant damage i should say so time action movement and distance you're gonna be able to do two actions you can take it's got a lot of rules like just within a sentence is able to cover a lot of stuff especially when it comes to a game that's got a lot of guns and explosives and things like that which sometimes can really get bogged down so um you've got rules for aoe damage over time grenades cover they're going to add to the dt dt being the difficulty uh, target number as you can see right there grit and condition is going to be your grit's going to be your hit points pretty much you start with a total grit of body plus four and you increase your grit by your body every level and there's a, some, a skill you can get that and can do it even better get more of those so you're hurt you're going to increase all your dts by plus one again very much like white wolf system uh, when you are at zero grit while wounded you're going to increase them by your dts by plus two and then it, you're critical at minus one grit you're pretty much unconscious 
and then you die at minus three grit. Sorry, sorry, kid. So you heal very fast in this. You can heal by aid kits or when resting. For each minute of rest, you recover one grit. That's pretty sweet. It's going to get you right back into the fight. So here's our different character creation steps. You're going to pick a specialty. You can see here like commando, cover, covert ops, heavy weapons. It's going to give you your, your three traits. You're not really rolling up anything you're just these specialties are going to give you your traits and it says like you're good at stealth operations or you're good at infiltration and intelligence gathering and then you want to try to pick a skill you get one skill uh that will be at trained level giving you a plus one and later on you can get more skills or increase the skill that you already have moving on to expert and master so for commando you're good at stealth operations maybe you pick hunting maybe you pick security or um your stealth obviously so you want to get that that skill uh, moxie is pretty cool this special skill is possessed by all army ants so you get moxie one at level one moxie two at level three it kind of goes up and what happens is at level four you have a moxie of two meaning you could increase body by plus two for one resist so in essence you spin your moxie to, to boost up one roll and your moxie resets every minute so you're going to be able to use this all the time this almost kind of reminds me a little bit of Shadowrun, a little bit, uh, the third edition that I did a video on. So very cool stuff. A lot of different skills here. And a lot of this is going to be a lot of gear. We've got tons of stuff here. Your standard issue layout, what you get, you're going to get a utility knife, a boot knife, backpack, uh, fatigue, stuff like that. Then you got simple weapons. It's got this CT number. Now, CT is clout, and that is the currency of, of Ant Army. So you start with a standard issue gear, and you use clout to purchase additional weapons and gear. You can reset your clout before each mission buying different weapons and gear if you want. So that's pretty cool. And as you go up in level, like right here, you can see enlisted soldiers, sergeants, and officers are going to get even more clout to be able to get better stuff. Uh, it's going to tell you what you need to do every time you level. That's pretty neat. There's no treasure hunting, so whatever you find, you have to turn back in to base. And then you've got the mission master. That's pretty much like the game master for this. It tells you about difficulties, situational modifiers, likelihoods of things happening, and then other situational things like darkness falling and obstacles, physical objects having durability. Uh, I like that the technology is relative level to the early 1980s. There's no cell phones. Bugs have no idea about nuclear energy and things are still recorded on tapes. I, of course, enjoy that. There's rules for explosives, communication, and even rules for vehicles here. You have control, armor, grit, and weapons for the vehicle. So that's pretty neat. I mean, just in this little, I mean, what is this, 10 pages, 10, 11 pages? You've got all this stuff. Now, the one thing that, of course, this is a kind of a base set uh, of rules. And he says that he's going to put out some more products for it. And I would love to see a full mission, just so you can get your head more around what that would look like. But it tells you about random encounters here, and it's very smart. It says, like, in general, each meter of travel over land brings with it a possibility of a random encounter. The first encounter is likely, but each uh, additional encounter is unlikely. Use likelihoods, which you'll find here in this section, um, in the bottom left, to you make a D, uh, you make a D6 roll, and you'll be able to see whether or not it is likely or unlikely for something to happen. So, and then it says here, it gives you a good option near the shore of the pond, a predator such as salamander might be the first thing you check. Then check to see if there are any tadpole farming aphids. Then check to see if there are any mosquitoes on patrol. Then check to see if there is a lone hornet operative who is awaiting a contact. So some very cool stuff there. I like the way that it's got this uh, likely and unlikely. And then it gives you some mission types, decoy, defend, liver, delve, destroy, and drop. And then how to award experience points. We've then got a whole bunch of creatures here that we can uh, fight against. It tells you about different types of allies and enemies. A lot of these, of course, are they're all bugs, bee soldiers, assassin bugs, cockroaches, mosquitoes, spiders. And then you've got predators like um, salamanders and Venus flytrap. So overall, this looks like a cool military type game with fun with ants. I'd like to see, of course, more stuff come out for it. One of my first games I ever played was Twilight 2000. Uh, and I always dig military type games and so it's cool to have this with the uh, the backdrop of this wasp and ant war going on through it so if this looks like something you might want to check out uh, go take a look at the uh, you know click the uh, link I've got down in the description and go check it out so thanks a lot